Hey guys, happy Friday. I hope you had a great week. Uh, so today we're going to be doing some self-shielded flux core in the 2G position. Okay, we've had some people ask about horizontal as well as flux core. Um, very common application, structural steel. Uh, we're gonna, actually going to follow some D1.1 guidelines. Uh, very typical connection in column splices, things of that nature, uh, where you have two pieces in a, a vertical connection and the weld is to be made horizontal. So I have one plate beveled at a 45 degree angle. The other plate is beveled, or is, is not beveled, it's just a 90 degree angle. So this is typically what you would see as a welding symbol. So let's start from left to right. So this break right here, that tells me that this edge right here, wherever that arrow is pointing, this break tells me that that is the edge to receive the preparation. And what do I mean by preparation? We need to have a single V bevel, right? So this single V is gonna be put on uh, this plate right here where the arrow is pointing. And once again, that break right here tells me that that's where it applies. If it broke the opposite way, this plate would re receive the preparation. Now we went ahead and put a quarter inch groove, or I'm sorry, quarter inch root opening in there and a 45 degree bevel. And that's where you would find this information on a welding symbol. And you might possibly have a tail in there with some special notes like FCAW-S for flux core arc welding self-shielded. And then this piece right here is going to simulate or tell us that I'm supposed to use a backing strip. Okay. Um, so quarter inch root opening, 45 degree bevel, backing strip, flux core arc welding self-shielded. And this break right here indicates that this, this plate right here is the one that receives the preparation. So we already have all that set up, so we'll go ahead over to the, uh, the stand and we'll show you exactly what it looks like in real life. All right, so very similar to the, uh, the illustration of the joint designation, we have our 90 degree plate down here. We have our quarter inch root opening and then a 45 degree, or five, 45 degree beveled plate on the top and then we have our steel backing. And we're ready to go. I got the run on and run off tabs. We're gonna go ahead and use those to our advantage and we're gonna use the flux core arc welding process. Today we're using some select arc 701-045 diameter. I'm running about 175 inches a minute and 18.5 on the volts. Uh, should run pretty decent for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the root in here. One single pass all the way across. Tie both plates and the backing strip together in, in one single pass. And then we'll go ahead and run the fills and then the cap right after that. And I'll kind of walk you through each pass, travel angles and work angles as we go. So I'm going to light up right here on the run-on tab, bring that right up into the welding area, and I'm going to make sure that I'm hitting the top plate, bottom plate, and that backing strip in one fell swoop. i got 045 wire, so I've got plenty enough speed width to tie all three of them in. And if need be, I can make a little bit of oscillation if I need to. I have about a 10 degree drag angle, because it's a slag process, so if there's slaggy drag, and I'm pointing into the joint about 90 degrees. Every so often I may have to just kind of point a little bit more towards that top plate just to make sure I'm tying in up there. But as long as I see the, the edges of that puddle tying in, I'm not too worried about it. Once I get done, I'm going to go ahead and pass through the joint onto the runoff tab, and then I'll break the arc there. All right, so we just got the root in, tied into the top plate, bottom plate, and the backing strip. Everything's nice and tight. Got a good, good wetting in on the toes. Everything flowed in really well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put in pass number two for my inner pass, and I'm just going to put a single stringer right in here along the toe of this weld. I'm going to put 50% of it is going to cover up my root pass. The other 50% is going to be on this plate and I'm going to try to get the edge of that puddle just below flush this way. That way I'm kind of building the, uh, the foundation for my cap, right? Every pass that you do, you're kind of laying the groundwork for your next pass. So you have to think ahead. It's kind of like a chess game. I'm planning ahead now. So I'll put that pass number two in right over top of that. I'll go ahead and put pass number three. We're just running stringers in here. I'm not going to do a big wacky weave or anything like that. Just a single stringer. Probably about 5 sixteenths in, in width. We'll go ahead and get to it.
pretty much exactly what I wanted. I'm about a sixteenth below this plate. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and put in pass number three, and I'm going to point that up towards that 45 degree beveled plate. I'm going to tie in 50% uh, of my weld into the face of that bevel, or into the into the. Uh, I'm going to tie 50% into that bevel, and the other 50% into the weld using the toe of weld number one to be the center of my next pass. So I'll be able to get 50% coverage from uh, plate and weld. So everything worked out good there. This wire lays really flat. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm probably gonna put two more passes in here before I go to cap. Because as I'm looking down here, the amount of welds that I've put, I've already put in three welds in here and it looks like I still have a significant distance to go before I even end up flush with this plate. So because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and put two more passes in here. One right along the bottom and then one on top of that. And that should get me in a good position to go to cap from there. All right, so this weld right here is just going to be another fill pass. We're going to fill it in, trying to build up uh, so we can go to cap. Very similar to the other, the previous passes, I'm going to tie 50% into the face and then 50% into the previous weld. All right, so this is pass number two of my cap. So my intention with this is to, this is going to be the center bead of my three bead cap. So I want to lace into the first pass 50% and then kind of build up a little bit more profile for weld number three that's going to go in there. That way everything goes in there nice, smooth, uniform, and linear. Overall pretty decent. We've got a uh, good tie-in on the bottom as well as on the top. Got one little BB up there I could probably get rid of. Uh, no big deal. Good tie-in, smooth weld appearance. Uh, we didn't exceed the eighth inch allowance that we're allowed to have for the cap and we didn't go below flush. So overall, turned out pretty decent. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is we welded this on DCEN, so electrode negative, meaning that the wire is hooked up to the negative terminal. You'll notice that because when you start putting your hand up against this base metal, 70% of that heat is going into the plate because we're on DCEN. The other 30% of the heat is going into your wire. So the base metal actually gets relatively, I mean, it gets really hot as you're welding through the, the piece. So make sure, you know, get yourself a good pair of gloves, uh, you know, with like a heat shield in it or, you know, just a separate heat shield. Um, they, they help out quite a bit when you're doing stuff like this, especially, you know, repetitive welds. So hope you guys were able to learn something. Until next time, make every weld better than your last.